the old house, as when Florian talked of it afterwards. He always called it, as all children do, who can recollect a change of home, soon enough but not too soon to mark a period in their lives, really was an old house. The true aspect of the place, especially of the house there in which he had lived as a child, the fashion of its doors, its hearths, its windows, the very scent upon the air of it, was with him in sleep for a season, only, with tints more musically blent on wall and floor, and some near light and shadow running in and out along its curves and angles, and with all its little carvings daintier. And it happened that this accident of his dream was just the thing needed for the beginning of a certain design he then had in view, the noting, namely, of some things in the story of his spirit in that process of brain building by which we are, each one of us, what we are. With the image of the place so clear and favorable upon him, he fell to thinking of himself therein, and how his thoughts had grown up to him. In that half-spiritualized house he could watch the better, over again, the gradual expansion of the soul which had come to be there of which indeed, through the law which makes the material objects about them so large an element in children's lives, it had actually become a part, inward and outward being woven through and through each other into one inextricable texture. In the house and garden of his dream he saw a child moving, and could divide the main streams at least of the winds that had played on him, and study so the first stage in that mental journey. For it is false to suppose that a child's sense of beauty is dependent on any choiceness or special fineness in the objects which present themselves to it, though this indeed comes to be the rule with most of us in later life. Also, Florian could trace home to this point, a pervading preference in himself for a kind of comeliness and dignity, and urbanity literally, in modes of life, which he connected with the pale people of towns, and which made him susceptible to a kind of exquisite satisfaction in the trimness and well-considered grace of certain things and persons he afterwards met with, here and there, in his way through the world. How insignificant, at the moment, seem the influence of the sensible things which are tossed and fall and lie about us, so, or so, in the environment of early childhood. How indelibly, as we afterwards discover, they affect us, with what capricious attractions and associations they figure themselves on the white paper, the smooth wax, of our ingenuous souls, as, with lead in the rock forever, giving form and feature, and as it were assigned house room in our memory to early experiences of feeling and thought, which abide with us ever afterwards, thus, and not otherwise. Our susceptibilities, the discovery of our powers, manifold experiences our various experiences of the coming and going of bodily pain, for instance belong to this or the other well-remembered place in the material habitation that little white room with the window across which the heavy blossoms could beat so peevishly in the wind with just that particular catch or throb. And so for Florian that general human instinct was reinforced by this special home-likeness in the place his wandering soul had happened to lie on, as, in the second degree, its body and earthly tabernacle, the sense of harmony between his soul and its physical environment became, for a time at least, like perfectly plain music and the life led there singularly tranquil and led with a curious sense of self-possession. The love of security, of an habitually undisputed standing ground or sleeping place, came to count for much in the generation and correcting of his thoughts, and afterwards as a salutary principle of restraint in all his wanderings of spirit. A touch of regret or desire mingled all night with the remembered presence of the red flowers, and their perfume in the darkness about him, and the longing for some undivined, entire possession of them was the beginning of a revelation to him, growing ever clearer, with the coming of the gracious summer guys of fields and trees and persons in each succeeding year, of a certain, at times seemingly exclusive, predominance in his interests, of beautiful physical things, a kind of tyranny of the senses over him. There were times when he could think of the necessity he was under of associating all thoughts to touch and sight, as a sympathetic link between himself and actual, feeling, living objects, 
and protest in favor of real men and women against mere gray, unreal abstractions. For this too brought its curious reflections, and, in relief from it, he would wonder over it how it had then been with him puzzled at the depth of the charm or spell over him, which lay, for a little while at least, in the mere absence of pain, once, especially, when an older boy taught him to make flowers of sealing wax, and he had burned his hand badly at the lighted taper, and been unable to sleep. The wistful yearning towards home, in absence from it, as the shadows of evening deepened, and he followed and thought what was doing there from hour to hour, interpreted to him much of yearning and regret he experienced afterwards, towards he knew not what, out of strange ways of feeling and thought in which, from time to time, his spirit found itself alone, and in the tears shed in such absences there seemed always to be some soul subduing foretaste of what his last tears might be. He remembered that also afterwards, as a sort of typical thing a white vision of heat about him, clinging closely, through the languid scent of the ointments put upon a place to make it well.